This is Congressman Paul Ryan, gentleman bow hunter from Wisconsin. He was elected to Congress in 1998, and his constituents have sent him back ever since. Now he's running for vice president on the Republican ticket. Paul Ryan is affable and charming, and people like to call him humble. Plus, he's shredded like a beast, just like our current president. And he's famous for working through numbers and coming up with budgets. Which brings us to this video. Paul Ryan's a Catholic, and Paul Ryan has built his budget on the way he understands Catholic social teaching. Now, the Catholic Church has had quite a few problems with what those right-of-center folks have been standing for recently. Things like warmongering, torture, the death penalty, and a broken immigration system that are all contrary to Catholic teaching, and frankly, basic human charity. A couple of Catholics have been attacking the Paul Ryan budget. First off, a group of nuns called Network started a bus tour condemning Paul Ryan because they claim he neglects the poor. And there are two bishops who have expressed concern about the Paul Ryan budget. But then you have other bishops, including his own, who commend Paul Ryan's desire to apply the principles of Catholic teaching to his political work. How do you cut through those differences? Of course, this brings us to the money question. What is Catholic social teaching, and how is Congressman Ryan applying it? Catholic social teaching is about big ideas, solidarity, subsidiarity, and the preferential option for the poor. Solidarity and subsidiarity are the foundations that balance Catholic social teaching. Solidarity is the concept that all people are interdependent on humanity as a whole. Employers are responsible for employees, rich for poor, and vice versa. We're all one sweaty, smiling family, and we're all God's children. Subsidiarity is the idea that action should happen where it has the most immediate impact. A centralized bureaucrat probably doesn't know enough to help a homeless man 3,000 miles away in Duluth, but the leaders of that man's community would. That man's neighbors would. And the responsibility lies with them. It's their own moral obligation to help the poor in their community, not big governments. The preferential option for the poor argues that those who are most vulnerable and at risk should be the most protected, and they certainly should. It's crucial to note, as Paul Ryan does, that the preferential option for the poor is not the preferential option for the state. Our responsibility to the poor and the vulnerable hardly means that we should lean on a massive bureaucracy to fix their problems. Doing so strips people of their real dignity. Solidarity means we break the cycle of dependence and help folks become self-sufficient. If you have solidarity without subsidiarity, you risk what Pope John Paul the Great called a social assistance state, a very real threat to the dignity of the person. If you have subsidiarity without solidarity, you have an empty individualist philosophy. Survival of the fittest rears its head. People drink tiger blood and the poor folks all die off. Both extremes are screwed up. Balance is king. The last thing, and this is where the disordered priorities and outright wrongness of fellow Catholics really grind our gears. It's the division between the two types of social issues. The first are the non-negotiables. When a president supports abortion on demand and curb stomps religious liberty, he's embracing intrinsic evils. To be clear, subsidizing abortions is an intrinsic evil. You can't defend intrinsic evil, though you might agree with the president on other issues. And that's why a group of nuns like Network can't stand for the Affordable Care Act, because doing so is embracing intrinsic evil. And then you've got the other important matters. How much we spend on Medicare, Social Security, Defense, what the government's place in education should be, how high tax rates ought to go, and so forth. These crucial issues are matters for prudential judgment, and it is simply okay for Catholics to disagree on them. Paul Ryan has said this himself and encourages dialogue and debate. We need both if we're going to save our country. It's all right if you disagree with Paul Ryan and his budget, but know his arguments first and know how the terms are defined. Don't embrace intrinsic evil at the expense of prudential judgment, and don't let agenda-driven Catholics lie to you about what Catholic social teaching actually says. For a PDF download with these points and others, visit SolidarityWithSalisbury.com.